heard it from a friend I heard it from a friend I heard it from another you've been missing You got a boyfriend You're up there every weekend And they're talking about you And it's bringing me down I know the neighborhood Talk with you when the story's good And the tales go taller on down the line I'm telling you, baby I don't think it's true Take it on a run, baby If that's way you want it, baby Then I don't want you around I don't believe it Just for a minute You're under the gun And you take it on a run Putting on your bedroom mind And you say you're coming home But you won't say when I can feel it coming If you have to not keep a run And you don't never back to the end Take it on a run, baby That's where you want it, baby And I don't For a minute, you're under the gun, so you take it on the run. I heard it from a friend. I heard it from a friend. I heard it from another. You've been messing around. Hey, how you doing out there, Guitar Heroes? All right, we got a little REO speed wagon from way back to 1981. And uh, a really popular song, obviously, uh, for these guys, which uh, still gets played a lot today when they, when they play live. Uh, this is a, a fairly simple song because we don't have too many complex chords. Uh, we don't have any bar chords. Uh, that, that part's uh, good. And uh, in this case, uh, I'm in the standard tuning, which is a little unusual for me. Most of the time I'm tuned down half, but in this case I'm in standard. Uh, Kevin sings so high that I'm singing down a full octave, and I brought the capo up to the third fret here just to make it sound a little bit better than singing so low. And let me give you a demonstration. So in the original, uh, it is in right here. Heard it from a friend who... Now, obviously, he's singing one full octave. Of Super high there. Well, be, and if you're like me, you can't get there. And so rather than sounding, you know, like you're singing way too low, does it make any sense? Well, this is, this is a way you use the capo as a tool. Now, I could probably put it up even a little bit higher yet because I can sing, sing a little bit higher than that. I heard it from a friend who... I heard it from a friend. Okay, so you can mess with that, but this is a great example of where, you know, unless you're extremely talented and you can sing at that same uh, same pitch that uh, Kevin Cronin is, then uh, then this is an alternative to use the capo, drop down a full octave. Remember, a whole full octave we're talking about if you were looking at the big E, and in this case it's a G, right? So here's where he is, or let's say that's where I'm at. <laughs> And then if we go up here to the 12th fret, go to that G. That's the whole difference in the singing voice. So this is a good example of how you can make it sound a little bit better rather than uh, sounding like you're singing way too low. And, and this is pretty common for a lot of uh, good singers. John Fogarty's another one, Beatles, on and on and on. Okay, so uh, it starts right out with, uh, with the G chord, and I'm using the four-finger G chord. It doesn't really matter. You can use one or the other. I think he's playing a 12-string, if I, if I remember right. And so it probably, he's probably do, doing the two-finger uh, down here where I've got my third finger rather than the third finger on the little E. 
right? I'm bringing it over to the V string, and then I put my little finger down on the uh, on the G string. Okay. Uh, obviously, a nicer little tone there. Start right out with that. Heard it from a friend who, and then we're gonna we can use a G uh, a C nine here by just bringing these two fingers, my first two fingers down one, and just leaving these two fingers here. And I think that's I think that's what he's playing. But you could just use a normal C too if you want to. You end up in the end up in the same spot. But that's this makes it a little bit easier if you're already in that position. You just have to move these first two fingers. So G. Heard it from a friend who's now C or C9. Add nine. Heard it from a friend who now we go to a D. Heard it from another you've been messing around. Back to the G. And then we and then we have a little tricky thing here. And this is where we take a, a D suspend four, a sus four, right? So get a regular D, get the little pinky down. And so you have that. And then a quick D. So we're going to go from the G to a D sus four on the end, and that's a little bit tricky. That's, that's uh, it takes a little bit of while to, to get that uh, together. If you're already in the in the four position, four finger G, and you've come off that D back into the G, and you're already in that spot, then you can just move over. Your top two fingers, you can leave the, these two fingers down there, and you're in the right spot then. And then you're going to take that off. And I think he kind of does a couple extra strums in there. So that's the end of that line. Then we go right back to that G. They say you got a boyfriend, C. You're out there every weekend, D. They're talking about you and it's now we're back to a C, so here you might want to go back this way. Bringing me down. Or at least that's what I did, but you can go back into the C add nine if you want to. You stay on the G, but I know the neighborhood. Now C, talk is cheap when the story's good. D, and the tails grow taller on down the line. Back to G. Hang on the G. I'm telling you, babe, C. But I don't think it's true, babe, D. And even if it is, keep this in mind. Now we're ready to go into the into the chorus, and we have this little walk down, the G to the E minor. And it's all on the big E string. So we start with the third fret on the G. Now we're just coming out of the G chord, so your finger's already there, right? Got the G chord. This finger's already here, so you don't have to move it. And, and then you can either slide it one down. You can just use the same finger if you want. One down and then open. Or you can go right into the E minor. And you can use two fingers here, too, if you want to. But we want to get to the E minor. So you can do two and go to the E minor, or you can do three. You take it on a run, baby, C. If that's the way you want it, baby, then I don't want you around. Back to G. And then we're going to do the same thing again. I don't, uh, E minor, I don't believe it, C, not for a minute, A minor, but you're under the gun, so you take it on the run, back to the D now, and then the D sus4, and then back to a D, D sus4, and then we're back in, into the next verse, and uh, same old thing, you get to the end of that, and you do the... And then back into the chorus again, and then there there is a uh, uh, an instrumental, and uh, in in this case you're going to be be playing an E minor and a C and an A minor and a 
another C and a B minor. So that little part, E, e minor, C, A minor, C, B minor, D, if you're playing in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the rhythm to this, you're playing that four times with this guitar solo going, okay? So obviously we're not worried about, about that now, we just wanna to try to get through it. Playing the chords and singing. And your friend comes over, like my cousin Brian, he plays that lead part, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so generally speaking, th there you go. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Take it on the run, Ario Speedwagon 1981, you know, fairly simple. We're in this standard uh, kind of this key of G with a G, a C, E minor. We got the a D, D sus four, D, and uh, the little walk down, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I hope you got something out of this lesson. Take it easy out there and uh, keep on a strumming. We like uh, Ario Speedwagon. Oh.